How the heck are you, everybody? I am Fastidious. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a little informal Sidious style video as we do this week's Should You Summon with regard to the special ancient summoning banner. It is a big one. We have one of the most coveted ancient exclusive legendary lords in the game, Soul Cadence. He is on 15x alongside Uridan. These are two very strong heroes. Uridan gets kind of a bad rap because some players, myself included, thought he would come to the game and instantly be like the best or one of the best heroes in the game. Instead, he is just good, though there are some places he really, really does shine. And then Soul Cadence, he is one of the best heroes in the game. This is one of the very best lords. I almost gave him triple S on my tier list, but some people might want to save because as the leakers have told us and as Destined showed, Yovar should be coming on May 18th. That is in just three weeks. That is very exciting. I will be saving for that and not going for this, but some of you might want to go on this. For that reason, we have to break it down and answer the question, should you summon? Let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, here we are, guys, on my website, fastidious.gg, completely open and free for all public use. No ads, no nothing, I guess, except for this little ad plugging it right now. Go check it out. We're updating it constantly. New features coming out in 1.5 within one month from now. Let's enjoy the hero list now and use it to break down Soul Cadence and then Uridin. We're going to start with Soul Cadence. He's kind of... He's the bell of the ball, right? He's the hero of the hour. This is the main reason you're gonna pull on it. He really is one of the best heroes in the game. He is absolute god tier when it comes to guild boss, but in a lot of content, especially where you need big single target boss damage, the guy really is tremendous. He is a mage, magic type damage. He is obviously a legendary hero. Let's check now, he's got that normal three by four range. When he ults, however, he gets an extra little column on either side, kind of giving him that vortex range. This is the same thing that happens when Twin Fiend ults, it actually helps a lot extending the range when you're doing content besides like Guild Boss, you know, if you're using them in Gear Raid 4 or something, you can reach those little fools on the side. I will say Twin Fiend would probably be better for that because he does AoE. Soul Cadence really is a single target god, but still viable. Now, stat ranks. We can see here this is compared to his class, so compared to all the other mages in the game. I think we're going to change this right now. The bottom is zero. I think we'll make it the minimum for the class. Let me know, guys, how you like that because I think it kind of distorts this. It looks like he's a lot higher up with this 10.6 than he actually is. That's not that much health for a mage. Attack, pretty good, not too crazy, especially for a single target mage. For example, that 52.65, that is Praetis, who does a lot of single targety stuff. And then you can also see, like, Alistair is also over 5,200 as a single target mage. Defense is meh. Magic resistance is pretty good. Cost a little high at 20, especially for single target, but super worth it because he's crazy, crazy good. Normal block, normal revival, attack interval at 2.0 seconds. That is lovely and really, really, really good Rage of Auto. One of the highest, if not the highest in the whole game. Tremendous. Overall, you can see that he actually is the highest because for overall, he's ranking 19 out of 19. Excellent hero, really nice base stats, but nothing too crazy. The craziness comes from the skills and then absolutely from the awakenings. If you want to go on the site, guys, you can read this whole blurb that Pink Jesus wrote. It is quite good. But let's get right into the actual skill kit breakdown. His talent. When attacking the same target, basic attack deals increasing damage. Each attack increases damage by 6% for up to 10 seconds, 10 times, and inflicts burning for 5 seconds. So if you get this at max stacks, you can have 10 second uptime and you can keep refreshing it. 60% increased damage. You want this guy lightning quick. It's pretty easy to do it with that 2.0 second base attack speed interval. Now we have his Lord skill, Feast of Devastation. Numeral Trace. Increases factionality's basic attributes by 50%. That is the standard. When Lord Soul Cadence casts Hell Breaks Loose, that is his ultimate, all faction allies gain penetration increase and deal 30% extra damage to elites and bosses for 10 seconds. It is a good Lord skill when it comes to how he helps his allies. It is not amazing. Not on the level of what Twin Fiend does or even what Pyros does. However, it's super selfish and it's really good. The way all those ancient exclusive lords tend to be a little bit more selfish because when he is doing Hell Breaks Loose, his ultimate, he's helping himself a ton and then he himself will also be benefiting from this pretty good lord skill. So what is that ultimate? The talent effect increases damage by 4%. With skill ups, that's gonna be 5%. 
and it is going to last for 12 seconds now. So that additional 5% on the 6% over here, lasting for 12 seconds, you can get 10 stacks of 11% increased damage, 110% damage increase. It's very good. Marks one target with the highest HP for 10 seconds, during which all heroes will prioritize attacking them. It's similar to like the focus fire effect that Pyros and Twin Fiend has. For him, it is called Pyro Blitz. Upon expiring, the mark will explode dealing and now here is the touch of aoe in his kit 240 percent aoe damage additionally when the hero is deployed as a lord he gains pyro blitz as i said so that's a special effect that he has now you can see you can increase that blast damage up to 30 percent and you can reduce the skill cost to super super cheap only 500 rage it costs to do that ultimate now to the basic attack, deals 80% magic damage to one enemy continuously. This can go up to 100%. His first passive, Synergy Blaze. Upon inflicting burning on targets, there is a 15% chance to gain one Fiery Essence, stacking up to four. During the next ultimate, every essence deals 60% increased damage. You can improve this with ultimates. Essentially, you're building essences, and you can lead to extra damage during his subsequent ultimate. It's very, very nice. Finally, Hellfire Emperor. He is the namesake for the tank codex boss after all he becomes immune to burning damage after talent inflicts burning on targets there's a 20 percent chance to increase their received burning by 20 percent that can go up to a 30 percent increased burning received and a 30 percent trigger chance he's a very good hero guys uh, he hits really really hard he is very selfish but boy does he boost his own stuff and boy does he boost it well now quickly on to his awakenings if we look over here his a1 this one you really need for him to shine so pyros inflicts vulnerability just from skill ups it gets a little bit better a little longer at a3 but he's an epic hero it's easy to do for twin fiend and also soul cadence for him to put out physical damage vulnerability and magic damage vulnerability he needs to be awakened level one so he's an amazing soul stone candidate with twin fiend for example i soul stoned him to make him a one with soul cadence it's the same kind of thing so targets marked with the ultimate will be inflicted with vulnerability physical and vulnerability magic this is a 25 percent vulnerability to both kinds of damage so just 25 percent more damage taken by that target which he marks at awaken two he gets an increase in attack 5% to his base stats. However, like all legendary lords, he also gets a benefit to members of his faction when he is the lord, when you deploy him. Faction allies damage to elites and bosses is now up another 5%. At Awaken 3, for every one burning on the targets, increases the hero's damage by 5%, up to 35%. So in like Guild Boss, where you can easily stack the seven burnings it takes to max that out, it's tremendous. At A3, he really is like a true superstar. A4, plus 8% crit rate, pretty simple. And then A5, if you can get that Soul Gaiden's A5, when the talent's damage increases effect, maxes out so you get all 10 stacks each basic attack launched extends the duration of all burnings on the target for one second this is especially good for something like arbiter of frost but for places you need damage over time or you need dots amazing Finally, his tier ratings for every piece of content in the game. I got them over here. I'm also just going to tell you now, we're going to go a lot faster for Uridin. This was taking way longer. I wanted informal Sidious. This is getting too normal Sidious, all right? We gave him S plus overall. I think that is not a surprise. S plus for Guild Boss. If we did individual ratings for specific pieces of content, this would be triple S. Gear Aid 1, A plus, super viable. Probably not as good as Twin Fiend. Ah, maybe he is, though, because he can reach the boss and snipe the boss. Uh, Twin Fiend will have more AoE, but he'll have better sniping. If you need sniping, God, maybe he's an S. Niche, but maybe an S. A-plus feels right. I don't know. GR2, we got C. GR3, we got C. GR4, we give him a B. He's actually probably more like a B-plus or an A now because you can use the strat. Maybe you guys have seen the Infernal strat I like to run on top where Twin Fiend can snipe the guys on the side. He can obviously do that, too. But as I said, not as potent in AoE. Probably B-plus here. AMR, we got B-plus just for that big burst the reason it's b plus is because we haven't updated this since the official poison nerf and we were thinking hey poison's just as good if not better now it isn't unless you can run liam is that gonna be still the preferred thing i don't know i'll have to test it this might get bumped up a lot to like a plus you know if you just want someone for single target damage on the platform void rift insanely obvious s plus he's an amazing boss killer campaign s plus faction trials obviously s plus you can just one shot the boss essentially uh six codex tremendous s plus 
Arbiter, we're giving him an obvious S+. Plus. He's really good. Guild War, A+, plus almost feels high. He's really good. I'm deferring to the PvP experts on this. I probably would have given him an A, but that's good. Single target, A+, plus seems fine. He's really good, but Infernal is not the meta. AoE, C, Anti-Air, B. As you guys can see, lots and lots of S's and S pluses. We almost gave him triple S, but we decided he was just a little short from reaching that elite group of the only eight heroes in the game we gave triple S. But if we had a ninth, it would probably be him. This guy's very good. Okie dokie, now Uridin. We're gonna go lightning quick here. I'm not gonna read every word. The gist of Uridin is his kit is built around something called Potent Surge. This is something only him and now Valderon have. It allows them not just to charge up their ult once and then the bar is full. They can double up the rage and have a second charge in there and that activates Potent Surge. Then when they ult while Potent Surge is there, two charges up are there they do special things, right? So you can see here in the talent, after the ultimate is cast, basic attack turns into Phantom Strike. If you do it when it's Potent Surge, it's gonna be Soul Harvest. This hits harder and this also has Execute. There's lots of things like that in this kit. His ultimate, Obliterating Blast, attacks up to 10 enemies in a large range ahead, deals 300% AoE damage, inflicts stun. However, if you've maxed out the Potent Surge, now it's 10 enemies again, large range ahead, deals 800% AoE damage and inflicts stun. The stun even lasts longer. You can see the skills up very, very nicely. When you can get Potent Surge, Potent Surging, he is amazing. However, he cannot build Rage as nicely as you would like. He has this passive, Phantom Rage, a lower HP grants a higher Rage Regen auto with a maximum increase of nine when HP reaches 30%. So if he has 30% HP or lower, he gets nine Rage Regen auto. This can go up way higher with skill ups all the way up to 15. That is crazy. 15 additional Rage Regen auto. We'll go to the attributes now. You can see he's got 12. He goes up to 27. However, if you do not have Carnelian or something to reliably keep him nice and low, but not dead, he is hard to use. You also need him attacking a lot so he can also get normal Rage Regen based off of his attacks and the Rage Regen percentage you build on him. He's kind of clunky right now. That's why a lot of people were disappointed by him. However, in content where he's attacking all the time, like Conquer, the guy is a god. He works really, really well in stuff like that. I do think his kit lends really well to content that probably doesn't exist yet. The executes from when he juices up those basic attacks, when he does Potent Surge, and he gets those Soul Harvests are fantastic, right? He can do really cool things, but for now, he kind of fills a niche as like just Conquer and then ridiculous for GVG because this hero, you can build crazy stats on him and he is the owner of the highest BP potential mark of any hero in the game. Good health here at 18.6, very good attack at 6.1k, defense at 3.3 is very good, we've got high magic resistance near the max in the whole fighter class, cost whatever, normal block of 2, you can see there's some really good stuff here with his overalls, he ranks pretty high in a lot of things, health is low but attack is very very high, defense is high, magic resistance is solid, uh, and then I don't know what allows people to have a lot of BP, but this guy gets it, if you get awakenings and skill ups into him i've seen his bp for sure over 110k i don't know what the highest is but whoever's built the highest here maybe you guys can let me know in the comments it's a lot guys it is a lot you know you can put the same gear on him and then put that gear on regulus and it is not going to look the same i'll tell you that very quickly i'll do the awakenings for anyone that already has him or doesn't have him but is about to wail like a madman during the effect of unyielding granted by arbiter of death increases attack speed by 200 when the effect ends, restores 50% HP. That's not too great. You want his HP nice and low. You want that Rage Regen Auto as high as possible. The other stuff with the attack speed, crazy. Crit damage plus 15%, nice. Now we got when Potent Surge maxes out, damage of Obliterating Blast, that's the ultimate, ignores 40% of the target's magic res, that's equivalent of like defense, but when you're dealing magic damage, that's super good. Penetration plus 8%. Finally, A5 for each enemy taking damage from Obliterating Blast, increases attack by 5% for 15 seconds, stacking up to five times. You use them in a lot of AUE content, so you can really get that 25% attack boost lasting post-deployment for 15 seconds. It's pretty good stuff. Let's get into the tier rankings so we can move our butts right along and start answering this SYS question, should you summon. Overall, we gave him an S. 
Field Boss, he's a B. If you can run him with like a Carnelian and a Valderon, he can do some really cool stuff. Geared 1, he is an S. Some people are having trouble using him, but if you time him out well, you use him behind the wall, the damage is ridiculous. As like a secondary DPS, he's about as good as it gets, and because you can put him behind the wall, you can let him like slowly kill himself, put him out of the range of a healer. He can do really cool things, get those potent surges, I really like it. Gear Aid 2, B+, viable but clunky. Gear Raid 4, really on the earlier stages, he'll fall off later on. Gear Aid 4, B+, he's very clunky there, but if you can make him work, he's really good. All the way up through Stage 5, if anyone knows a Stage 6, a 4-6 strategy using Uridin, let me know. I've only seen him up to Stage 5. Cool stuff, though. AMR, only an A+, just because you kind of want quicker ults in AMR to kill the boss faster. You don't need too much AoE, you kind of just want to nuke down the boss. That's actually that's going to be the most efficient way to do it. He still will be viable. You can even just ult with him normally. It doesn't always have to be Potent Surge. He's got crazy high base stats. If you get him early, he's going to be a hard carry for AMR. Voidrift, A+, again, clunky, getting the double rage fill-ups for the Potent Surge, but when you do it, the lead button, campaign, campaign battles are really long. He works fine. You have all the time in the world. We're giving him an S. Faction Trials, you need fighters for cultists. Everyone who does not have fighters knows how badly you need fighters for cultists, just like how I know you need mages for northerners. So by that virtue alone, he is an S+. Plus. Conquer, he's on a lot of the top 20 teams in the whole world. Incredible. Sticks, solid, not that special. Guild Wars, Huge S+. Plus. He's pretty good on defense, but he has the highest BP, which means he's the best way to affiliate your Demon Soldiers. Amazing. And then Arena, pretty good. A and A+, plus for single target and AoE, respectively. Let's answer some questions now. All right, we have to go by spending groups, I think, and we have to begin with the big boy spenders. If you're a dolphin or really a whale, if you're the kind of person that spends hundreds of dollars a month or more, you should definitely pull. You know, unless you don't want to pull out of like a principal thing based on some things that have happened this week, which I totally would get, I think you have to pull. I mean, Uridin, if you are like wanting to be an endgame player, he is needed for GVG. He's the best source of BP. If you want to play with the big boys, you need to affiliate your demon soldiers with a bucket of BP, and that bucket is named Uridin. He's good at other stuff, but that's the main thing. Also for endgame conquer, he is, you know, insanely meta. And then for Soul Kittens, he's tremendous, right? You're gonna see him on a lot of the top teams. That's why we are in the world rankings for Guild Boss right now. You can see uh, Fibu, aka Jet. Uh, they're not using it right now, but you can see Radagast, uh, Deep Blue Sea. A lot of these guys have got their Solkas. Here's Solka on number seven. Solka again at number nine. So I believe he appeared in, is that four out of the top 10, including two out of the top three? pretty good stuff. You'll see you're never going to see a Soul Cadence that isn't A1 because you really, really, really need that increase in the vulnerability. Uh, you will also see that if we find any Soul Cadence team that has Zila 2, she is going to do worse than a team with Twin Fiend and Zila 2. That's because there's a bug, and it's funny how the game just chooses which bugs they want to address and which ones they don't. There's a bug with Zila 2 and how she interacts with Focus Fire, what Twin Fiend and Pyros do, not what Soul Cadence does, so she gets an extra hit. That's why she has such bonkers damage. She's a great hero, but that's why it's so bonkers. However, this is a bug with a legendary hero, so they don't seem to care. A bug with an assault, they seem to care. So let's look. Let's go to Deep Blue Sea, the number two team from today, and you can see Soul Cadence at 154 million, and then we've got Zeal 2 at 138. Now let's find the first Twin Fiend team. Look like Looks like we've got one over here. Are they running Twin Fiend as a Lord? I don't know, but yes, they must be. 255 with Zeal 2. You see that difference, right? Those double hits, they're double hitting, baby. Nearly twice as much damage. Uh, Soul Cadence is very selfish, and he doesn't allow Zeal 2 to exploit that bug. There you kind of have it. So that is an important consideration. If you're not an endgame player with endgame gear, you're probably going to have a hard time making Soul Caden shine if you're replacing him for Pyrus or Twin Fiend and you rely on Seal of Two. Uh, so that's really the difference. I guess we can pick one more. Let's find one more Twin Fiend team. Here we go. Uh, so shout out to Blunt Guts. I know he's a really great content creator. I see him popping up all the time. 218 for the Seal of Two. Let's compare that now to right above him, Gooch. Got that A3 Solka, 148 for Zeal 2. You see that difference, right? So Soul Cadence puts up way more damage, 152, than Twin Fiend does. Let's check Blunt Guts, 38, right? Uh, however, they're, they're, the difference between Soul Cadence and uh, Twin Fiend is kind of made up between the difference between Soul Cadence Zeal 2 and Twin Fiend Zeal 2. So it's not this total be all end all thing. I'll say in general, Soul Cadence is a better hero than Twin Fiend, but I will also say, now that I have Twin Fiend, he's actually pretty darn good outside of just Guild Boss. He's good for Gear 8 4, he's good for our 
Arbiter of Frost. You can use him in Void Rift. Uh, he's an impressive guy. If you have an A1 Twin Fiend and you're not aspiring to be like a top 20 player in the world, I think you can skip it for sure. I am absolutely skipping it. I'm happy with my Twin Fiend. Solka, if I got him, I would break down my Twin Fiend and probably put the Soul Stone I put into him into Soul Cadence and the skill ups and stuff. I'll also be honest, I'm sitting on three other Soul Stones, so I could get it. If I got a Soul Cadence, or hopefully when I get a Yovar, he'll be an A4 Yovar uh, if I decide to break down that Twin Fiend. Uh, that's, that's very much a me thing. I lost my train of thought. I was seeing stars i got so excited but you can see he's great but so is twin fiend i mean twin fiend's right here and for all these guys you need awakenings if you really really want to shine i guess i can very quickly show you what that a1 with the vulnerability looks like so if we go to infernal blast we've got our lords here pyros just straight up applies vulnerability from his passive when you get the ult this is going to go all the way up starts at 10 percent it goes up to 20 with skill ups when you get pyrus a3 uh the del delusional gaze is going to last five more seconds so five more seconds of vulnerability you got nothing with twin fiend and nothing with soul cadence until you get the may one and then it's 25 percent for both physical and magic that's just better than pyrus but you need an a1 legendary lord same story for soul cadence so you need a soul stone that you're sitting on hoping to get or that you're going to pull two or maybe you already already have him at a zero then you don't need to tell have me tell you to go a1 all big spenders are going to do this you're going to pull as you can kind of see i think most other people probably shouldn't i'll say if you're a brand new player uh and you're at all impatient even a little bit you should be pulling your ancient summons this is a good banner getting either of these heroes would help a lot but also you'll pick up a bunch of epic lords so there's no reason to skip uh, but if you can hold out to may 18th i do think carnelian is probably especially for players that have been playing longer and have some form of a collection of chaotic units carnelian makes the whole thing sink she keeps them all alive while keeping their health really low because she's just applying these soul essences over and over so i think that's the baron to hold out for and i do think yovar is going to be a better hero than soul cadence Yovar is so much better than Racha and Lunaria. I do not think Soul Cadence is so much better than Twin Fiend. I really don't. He's better, uh, but he's different. Aracha kind of sucks as a hero. Great Lord kind of sucks as a hero. Uh, you can't say the same thing about Twin Fiend, so that difference alone, I am I'm drooling. I'm salivating at the opportunity to get Yovar. Uh, but yeah, again, I'll say also if you're a lower spender and you, you're on the fence, if it's a principal thing, this might be one to skip. Things have been turning a corner this week, but... I don't know, are we ready to go all in yet? I know personally, I am not. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you do pull, be sure to let me know who you pull. I'm sorry this video ended up being so long. I'll be completely honest with you. As I was making the video, I kept finding tiny little mistakes with my website. I will be transparent. It made me furious. If you're feeling some energy out of me, I don't know how to describe it. That's what that frickin' is. Uh, so now I have a whole bunch of other work to do. So I'm gonna end the video here. Share with your mother. Much love, guys. Have a beautiful weekend. I'll see you real soon. Fast Didius.